At last, it's time for the Wonderswan game I'm most qualified to talk about, Beat Mania for Wonderswan. Developed by Konami Computer Entertainment Japan, and published by Konami, and released on April 28th, 1999. Music games are near and dear to my heart. I've spent half my life playing them, and the Beat Mania series is not only where I've logged the most hours, but it's also how I met most of the friends I interact with on a regular basis. Beat Mania was released in arcades in December of 1997 by what was then known as Konami's GMD, Games and Music Division. The cabinet was heavily inspired by club DJ equipment at the time, it featured five vertical rectangular keys and a turntable for both players. Each of those buttons and the turntable have their own lane on screen, and notes drop down in those lanes toward a red line. The player must then press the corresponding button or scratch the turntable in time when the note overlaps with the judgment line. Depending on the player's timing, they can get one of five judgments. Flashing great, great, good, bad, poor, and that ultimately influences their scoring. Separate from scoring, there's a life bar which represents the audience's satisfaction with your performance. Clearing a song requires you to raise the life bar beyond a given threshold by the end of the song, and in an arcade setting, this determines whether or not you get to play another stage. In practice, this means on songs with really hard endings, you can manage to get a really good score but still fail the song because your life bar was too low. Unlike Western music games, which primarily rely on licensed music, Japanese music games tend to feature in-house and commissioned artists much more heavily, and Beat Mania is no different. While the regular roster of artists is barely recognizable almost 20 years later, many of the series' most iconic artists and songs originated in classic Beat Mania. Beat Mania blew up in the arcades and led to a huge boom in music games in 1998. Due to the success of the series, the Games and Music division was renamed to B-Money to capitalize on the game's brand recognition. And very quickly, the lineup expanded. Dance Dance Revolution and Poppin' Music would be released in 1998, and Guitar Freaks and Romania would join them in 1999. Fast forward to today and there are arguably too many games in the arcade B-Money lineup with 10 active series and 11th reportedly still on the way. In 1999, Konami unveiled Beat Mania 2, a new spin-off of Beat Mania that moved to a widescreen display and added two more buttons for a total of seven buttons and a turntable per side. The fancier deluxe cabinets proved to be far more popular than the regular ones, so they were discontinued and the series was renamed to Beat Mania 2DX. The popularity of 2DX would quickly surpass the original Beat Mania series, and in 2002, Beat Mania The Final was released, bringing an end to the five key era, whereas 2DX continues to this day. With the history lesson out of the way, let's talk about Beat Mania for Wonderswan. Beat Mania for Wonderswan released just a month after Beat Mania GB for the Game Boy Color, but make no mistake, these two games are completely unrelated and were developed by different studios within Konami. Beat Mania GB was developed by Konami's Kobe Studio, and was an approximation of Beat Mania limited by the Game Boy's hardware limitations. For example, charts from the arcade version had to be modified because otherwise you'd be asked to press both left and right on the D-pad at once, which is impossible on original hardware. The audio also had to be replaced with chiptune covers. According to an interview in Volume 1 of the The Wonder Swan magazine, Konami Computer Entertainment Japan set out to make as accurate a port of Beat Mania 3rd Mix as they could given the Wonder Swan's far more capable specs. The idea was to make it possible to practice for the arcade version from anywhere. The Wonder Swan was advanced enough to let them use the original arcade assets, and they did a pretty good job of porting 3rd Mix over, except for one large oversight. Beat Media 3rd Mix had a total of 27 songs, and the ROM size they had to work with on the Wonder Swan would only let them fit 11. As a result, the game features 10 songs picked from Beat Mania 3rd Mix's song list, and one from Beat Mania Band Yebisu Mix from the PlayStation, presumably because they were developed by the same team. As you've no doubt noticed, the game is played in portrait orientation, so the player can have four buttons under each of their thumbs. This kind of layout was ahead of its time and wouldn't become a standard part of handheld music games until DJ Max Portable on the PSP in 2006. The game also came with a turntable attachment you could stick onto the A and B buttons hanging out at the top of the device, although tracking down copies of the game that come with one now can be pretty hard. So is Beat Mania for Wonderswan worth your time? Well first off, I would recommend strongly against playing this in an emulator, as it makes timing more difficult and the timing windows in Beat Mania are rough enough as it is. If you're a 2DX player accustomed to the luxuries of floating high speed and sun plus green numbers, going back to the 5 key era can be pretty rough to adjust to, but it is a really nice way to go back from time to time and experience that era. If you play music games casually, then you're less likely to notice these things, so you might enjoy it more, but be aware that there is a learning curve due to the tight timing windows. Beat Mania for Wonderswan was originally marketed as being Volume 1 in a series, but unfortunately it was the one and only game that Konami would release on the Wonderswan. But at least they made sure it was a really great one. 